thank you. High expectations to do this in 15 minutes, but yeah, let me see if I can try. Luckily, we do have a booth outside and a lot of experts with me, so it's not all on me, luckily. So yeah, uh, it's all about uh, long, long activity today, right? And today, you guys for sure are choosing uh, low power technologies to enable uh, the IT solutions that you are creating, right? And that's a really, really good thing, and it's a, a really good first step. But to really, truly make it uh, long-lived, your devices and IoT solutions, you are really in for a ride when it comes to power uh, consumption. And I'm guessing that most of you have already kind of got into that and get that. Um, but before going into um, kind of the details of what, what can be done uh, or how it looks like, I would like to kind of go back and see why and remind ourselves why are we actually uh, bothering this? Why would we bother about battery life? Um, we are all creating uh, solutions that are supposed to um, give or uh, optimize and actually make something more efficient, right? So our customers are expecting that we are going to be saving some time or some money, doing something excellent for them. And uh, they expect, of course, that they are going to be having a product uh, to use in a very easy way, that they're going to be collecting data or using the data in an easy way. Uh, so the user experience is obviously very, very important. They would really like to rely that the product that they have bought, the service that they bought, uh, really is working at all the times that it's promised to work. And of course, they don't want to be bothered by the maintenance, which is unavoidable, but it can be drastically lowered. So, it's all about making sure that these kind of three things are working, uh, working for the customers and the presentations that you actually do and the execution that you do for your customer. And I would actually state that the battery life is one of the key or the fundamentals of making this work. There are others, but the battery is sometimes a little bit forgotten when it comes to this aspect. And it shouldn't be really underestimated, the fact that how much maintenance cost can actually be. Um, if you are in the remote uh, uh, places having uh, to change batteries when you were not really wanted to change, the battery might not cost that much, but to actually drive out there and change that is actually quite costly. And it ends up to be all about the return on the investment. So it is really, really important that uh, when you are designing your solution to think about how much is not only going to cost you to create this and to sell this, but it's actually how much is going to be costing the customer later on to use this uh, service or this product. And uh, if that is actually going to be uh, useful, if you're going to be getting your return on investment by providing, and customer getting their return on investment by providing them with a really long-lived solution. But if we go now and dig a little bit about the uh, battery life and uh, the fact that how people are working with it or if they are working at all at it. If, I mean, today you have a, um, I would say we are a bit spoiled with a lot of technology that actually provides a lot of things off the shelf that you can kind of hook up and work with it. Uh, but don't be fooled by that. You really do need to um, have a sense of what is actually going on. And most of us are usually talking about and designing for something called average battery life. So any product that you see out there, uh, you will be uh, asking about the battery life and they Somebody will tell you it's a two, two years, it's a four years, it's a 10 years, it's 12 year. But nobody's actually pinpointing that is, after all, average. And if we are assuming a simple thing that, okay, it's a normal distribution, right? So if average is your four years of battery life, then normal distribution will tell you that at least half of your things will be dying. The battery will be drained before the four years. And some of those much earlier than you actually anticipated. And that will absolutely uh, imp have an impact on the maintenance cost for the customer, on the user experience and reliability of it all. So I would rather say, if we are going to be doing something about the battery life, to have a mindset where you go into it thinking, OK, what is the minimum battery life that I could provide for my customer? 
And it's a tricky thing. It's nothing that you would, you, you kind of um, uh, go and say, yeah, today we're going to be doing this. It's, a, it's almost a mindset change. But we are seeing this happening, and we're actually proud to work with our customers, Sensitive, who are doing this really well. They actually have the first uh, um, uh, batch of products um, already two years ago. They had a gar guarantee uh, for a battery life guarantee of three years. It's a 10 year battery life product but they had a three years of as a minimum uh, battery life um, explaining to customers that they can actually be trustworthy. Um, and this is something that is quite exciting to see that this is actually happening and it's very, very needed. Another thing that uh, um, people kind of go into uh, is we hear a lot about the power consumption is all about hardware. Now, absolutely, hardware is a huge part of it all, but what I'm talking about is this traditional mindset where we are talking about, okay, there is a guy in the lab to fix everything, the battery, the chipset, he will solve it, right? Um, or your supplier, or your, uh, batteries, your supply, chipset supplier, battery supplier, it's their problem. Uh, I think that mentality also needs to change. The mindset needs to change to thinking from the bigger picture, thinking from the perspective of, okay, this is not only about the chipset, it's about the network, the ecosystem. How are you using your device? Uh, what kind of technology is going to be using? What software are you putting on top of your hardware? Uh, what kind of protocols are you going to be using? What propagation, what environment are you going to be using, in? and so on. So with that said, I thought that we'll look at one thing that is really, really important. If you consider the two th things that I said and said, okay, to really do this, you need to go into uh, understanding what you are creating. Your application and your device, meaning very simply, you need to know your current. So in this case, I'm actually using one of our customers, uh, Bintel, um, uh, which is a waste management uh, slider. You can actually see that in the demo outside in our Coitec booth. Um, so you can get all the details about it there. Uh, I'm using them as an example to kind of showcase very simply how a current would look like. And to showcase the fact that usually there are three things you have to think about. You have to think about the sleep mode, the idle mode. You have to think about the RX mode. And you have to about think about TX mode. And different things are going to be affecting these different modes and different things that you can do with these different modes. Um, if we just check idle mode, so that would be usually um, uh, something that you will work uh, with your chip, chipset provider. Or if you are uh, buying something off the shelf and this is what you get, you really need to understand why is it working the way it is and what you can do about it. And if you are now integrating this into your device, you have to understand is there anything on the, in the processor on the, or on the peripheral uh, components that you can really affect by putting them down to sleep so they don't uh, mess up the sleep mode that you actually wanted to have to begin with. Uh, or if you wanted to put your device into the sleep faster. If you check out the TX mode, uh, here it's uh, obviously still hardware, right? You, because we're going into the uh, transmission mode, so you can always say, okay, there's the RF components, there is the antenna part, but we're also getting into the point from the point of the protocol and the point of kind of having a better view of how you're using the whole system. So here is an example where uh, you can see the original curve that I showed just a slide before, the green one, where, which is with the spreading factor of seven. And then the same one uh, uh, device with the spreading factor of 12. Uh, looking into, the, looking in like what is the actual difference and what, what difference will it make really uh, if you are one in the other. Now these are the two extremes really, but it's a really good point because it is after all the end device that we'll be choosing uh, and you will be choosing what, uh, what spread factor you're actually getting, in, getting into. And in this case, we're talking about um, and if you, I don't know if you see the numbers, probably you do, 55.1 micro, uh, the, uh, sorry, the, uh, um, uh, the uh, energy part, the 55.1 uh, microwatt hour, and then 2.7, so simply said, about 20 times more energy spent in one compared to the other, uh, which really gives you kind of a sense that 
yeah, there is a point to think when you are really choosing this and the environment you're placing this in, the gate width do you are, do you, that you might be managing or you are not actually, um, you're putting in this in the network that you are not uh, responsible for. Uh, you need to really consider that this might be the fact. But you can't be fooled uh, either about it because if we go, for example, into the Rx mode, we're seeing the same thing here, right? The one is the, um, the spreading factor 12, the other is uh, the yellow one is the spreading factor 7. And in this, in this case, I actually chose to show how, what happens when you don't get the, um, you, you don't get any answer. You send me, you don't get any answer. And this is the part which people are usually confuse because they say, well, on the other slide, we just said 20 times uh, more spent. But in this slide, we're actually saying, well, if you get into a case where you then get any answer, suddenly these two spreading factors are going to be giving you almost similar amount of energy spent. So you need to be aware of these kind of things to, to really assure that when you are designing and when you are placing this on the field, you're placing it in the context where this should be working for you and for your customer and uh, not kind of taking for granted that this is going to be taken care of whatever protocol you're using, whatever stack you're implementing. Um, another huge thing that uh, um, I think it's actually very much of a misunderstanding, but it is because it's a simple and we sometimes get lazy and this is what we do is that we assume that the battery life is something as simple as taking the nominal battery capacity divided by average current and this is where it is. So creating an um, energy budget or battery life budget when we are working with it, this will be the first thing that you would do probably. And then you go get, uh, get digging into the bits and pieces. And I choose here a bit of a common, uh, common case. Um, I'm th assuming a um, battery of about 600 milli amp hours, and I'm actually using the same case that I showed before uh, uh, with the uh, Bintel slider saying that, okay, let's assume a duty cycle of uh, one transmission per hour. We're seeing a peak current about 40 um, um, uh, milliamps, and then we have on the average, we would say during this, about 20 microamps. And Easily we will say, okay, well, that's, that's no brainer, right? It's about 3.4 years that we can get out of this. But the problem is that you need to, again, put it in the context of the whole product and whole service. And one of those things is obviously, for example, what battery have you chosen for your specific project? Now, the example that I'm using is data sheet type of example, right? But if you really want to do and check this out, you need to check these batteries, whatever batteries you are choosing, uh, from the perspective of your own application and make them actually profiled so they fit and they can, you can get the understanding for your uh, actual device and your application. So I have here these two, uh, I chose coin cells. I mean, they're alkali alkalized as well and we have a lot of these profiles that you can look at uh, actually at our boot. Uh, and here is an example without actually giving away. These are very, two very common batteries. You probably have, have them in your packet <laughs> or in your product. Um, won't disclose that, but it, one is seen as a good one and one is uh, not that good one. And considering the fact that you are then um, going into the session of the um, application that we're using and the chips that we're using in, for example, in the Bintel, which is, I think is a Semtec S, X1267, um, need to check that. But anyways, um, we're saying that, okay, you can't go below 1.8 volt. Well, okay, if we are applying that, then you can very easily see that for the really good battery, yeah, well, you can't get those 600, really, what you thought, right? But you can get maybe 460 milliamp hours. But for a very bad one, it's only 125 milli, milliamp hours. So what you think is 600 milliamp hours and will be giving you about 3.4 years. Uh, in reality, you are probably most likely to end up with 2.6 years, only for six, uh, 460 milliamp hours. Or as likely, because I mean, it's a 50-50 there, right? Depends on how good you are choosing your battery. You will end up with 0.7 years. And this is what we see a lot. And, uh, 
people really need to understand that it is not about, okay, I will just go and do my chipset thing and not really take, take it from the big picture and put it in the context of what is the battery and how is this going to be used and in what context. And to that, you can also apply the temperature, you can apply the different type of um, uh, environmental effects that will give you even further difference in, in this. But all in all, it's a, it's a huge difference, and you have to consider that. But power design, or design for the power, uh, for low power, or low current consumption is very tricky. And nobody's denying that. I don't think nobody has, no, not anybody has really figured it out. There are a lot of uh, good efforts out there, and people are really doing great things. Um, uh, just an hour ago, there was a great wor uh, workshop by uh, Sodak. They, they are really, um, really serious about uh, making their devices really uh, low power. And, uh, we're happy to see that, but I understand that it's really tricky because it's a world um, almost of magic. <laughs> it's almost opening up a Pandora's box because, and I kind of tried here to summarize it, but I don't think it's actually giving it the, 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 uh, the fair picture of how crazy it can be. But let's say, okay, longevity, what do you have to uh, f do for longevity? Well, you definitely need to know uh, what is your application, how you're going to be using it, what problem you're going to be solving, uh, what activity, what load, uh, where is it going to be? Is it going to be in a cold place, outside, inside? Is it going to be um, uh, beaten on or stamped on, or is it going to be... Uh, I don't know, play somewhere that nobody is ever going to be seeing it. Um, and then what size it's going to be, what form factor, what chemistry is it going to be for the battery, depending on all of these. Uh, how is the network going to be set up? Um, propagation, server, mobility. I mean, it's huge. And you can probably add a lot of these. And you can probably replace them and move them around. But the point is, it's an iterative process. And it's a very tricky one to get really well. So you have to have this in mind all the time and really iterate throughout the whole project. And this is actually what it is all about. To get your um, device really long-lived is to understand that you need to have awareness throughout the whole project that you are creating this device. And the, the product development maintenance cycles, you have to understand that it is it's not about creating a budget, a battery budget in the beginning, and then hoping just before the deployment that, oh, it's going to work, because it's not going to. I can guarantee you 2,000% it's not going to work. Uh, the other thing is, of course, involve the developers throughout the whole stack. I mean, yes, you can give it to your hardware person, but you can also consider the fact that whoever is working on your product is going to affect the power, uh, the, uh, power consumption in one way or the other, and they better have respons taken responsibility for, uh, responsibility for that. And the only way, of course, to do that is for people to have the insights and uh, understand what is the current day, how do you have, what is it, the KPIs that you are asking for, how you should be using that. And the easy way to do that is, of course, if you have the easy to use and accessible and affordable tools. And this is where the sales pitch comes in, because this is exactly what we have, obviously, and that we are really proud of. And this is also something that I would actually like to dare you to go to our booth, which is Koitek booth just outside, and measure your device and see whether you're going to be surprised to see how your current is, or how well do you know actually your currents and how your application. But surprisingly, it is really hard to have that insight. Once you have it, you have all the means to actually start working on the battery life. And it says 000 here, so I guess I'm done. So thank you very much. Okay. So bring your IoT devices, go to her booth, and have them measured, yes, right? absolutely. That's what you're going to do. How many people do you have at the booth? I have three. Three people are there over there, so okay, you should so have two people there. Nicely are. line up and, yeah, uh, and see what the energy requirement is. Please do that. Is. That would be really cool to also see all of the devices and the efforts you're doing in battery life. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.